Welcome back for another Music Theory Bite. This video is about spelling intervals. If this is something you'd like to learn more about, then keep watching. An interval is the distance between two pitches. Intervals have three characteristics. They have direction, size, and quality. Let's deal with each of those characteristics individually. When we talk about an interval's direction, there are three possibilities. Intervals can ascend, go from the low pitch to the high pitch, they can descend, going from the high pitch to the low pitch, or they can be played harmonically, where both pitches sound simultaneously. An interval size is an expression of the number of letter names that separate the two pitches. We generally count from the low pitch to the high pitch, and we count the pitch that we start on as one. We also ignore accidentals. We're only concerned with how many letter names separate the two pitches. So for example, if we have a B ascending to a D, we count B as one, C as two, and D as three. B to D is a third. In this example, F sharp descending to A, we start with the lower pitch, A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, E is 5, and F is 6. F sharp down to A is a sixth. In this example, where C and B sound simultaneously, forming a harmonic interval, C is 1, D is 2, E is 3, F is 4, G is 5, A is 6, and B is 7. This interval is a seventh. The identification of an interval's direction and size is fairly easy. When we start talking about an interval's quality, things get a little bit more complicated. Quality is the specific distance between the two pitches, stated as perfect, major, minor, augmented, or diminished. We can think of those as adjectives that modify the actual size of the interval. So for example, you'll hear minor third, perfect fifth. Those tell the specific sizes of the thirds and the fifths that we encounter. Interval qualities fall under two different systems. For intervals that can be labeled either minor or major, from narrowest to widest, we can have diminished, minor, major, or augmented intervals. This system applies to seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths. For intervals that can accept the designation perfect, we have diminished, perfect, and augmented intervals. This applies to unisons, fourths, fifths, and octaves. Each designation is a semitone away from the designation next to it. So for example, a diminished interval is a half step lower than either a minor interval or a perfect interval. A minor interval is a half step narrower than a major interval. An augmented interval is a half step wider than a major interval or a perfect interval. We can make an interval narrower either by raising the bottom pitch or by lowering the top pitch. We can make an interval wider either by lowering the bottom pitch or raising the top pitch. When figuring interval quality, the method we use depends on the interval size. We can divide all of our intervals into four groups. Group 1 intervals include all seconds, intervals that have consecutive letter names, such as C to D, G to A, or B to C. These intervals can be diminished, minor, major, or augmented. 
seconds can never be perfect. The quality label that we'll use reflects the amount of space between the two pitches. Minor seconds are consecutive pitches. If we take a look at a piano keyboard and we have a C sharp to D, these two pitches are adjacent to each other, so they would be a minor second. Major seconds have a pitch that separate them. So for example, D to E has one key in between them, E flat or D sharp. Because they are not adjacent, because they are separated by a pitch in between them, that would create a major second. Augmented seconds can occur, such as between the lowered sixth and raised seventh scale degrees in a harmonic minor scale. Augmented seconds have two pitches in between them. So for example, A flat to B natural, A to B forms some sort of second, and we have an A natural and a B flat in between these two pitches. Because there are two pitches in between the pitches of the interval, it would be an augmented second. So in summary, group one intervals, which consist of all seconds, are labeled based on the number of intervening pitches between the two pitches within the interval. Group two intervals are all of the other intervals that can be labeled major or minor. These include thirds, sixths, and sevenths. Group two intervals can never be labeled perfect. In order to figure the quality of a group two interval, you need to know your scales. As always, begin by determining the size of the interval. So for example, C up to A flat, counting up, we get a sixth. Now, if the upper pitch appears in the natural minor scale built on the lower pitch, then the quality is minor. If, however, the upper pitch occurs in the major scale built on the lower pitch, the quality will be major. So in this case, because A flat shows up in the C minor scale, this would be a minor sixth. With this interval, D is the lower pitch, B is the higher pitch. In the D minor scale, B would be a B flat. Since B natural shows up in the D major scale, this would be a major sixth. And one more example, E up to G sharp. G sharp appears in the major scale built on E, so this would be a major third. Diminished intervals would be a half step narrower than what would appear in the natural minor scale. So for example, A to C flat. C natural appears in the minor scale built on A. This is a half step narrower because the higher pitch has been brought down by a half step. So this would be a diminished third. In this example, A flat to F sharp, in the key of A flat major, we would expect an F natural, since this is a half step wider than what would occur in the major scale, the interval we have is an augmented sixth. Group three intervals are intervals that can be labeled perfect. That means that they cannot be labeled major or minor. Group three intervals include unisons, fourths, fifths, and octaves. In order to be a perfect interval, the higher pitch must be in both the major and natural minor scale built on the lower pitch. So for example, in the interval you see before you, E flat to B flat, first the size is a fifth, and then we see if B flat shows up in both the major scale and the natural minor scale built on E flat. Sure enough, it does. So this would be a perfect fifth. 
a diminished fifth would be narrower than a perfect fifth. So in the example that we just looked at, if we raise the bottom pitch, E flat, up to E natural, we have made the interval one half step narrower. We have diminished it. We could likewise take the B flat and lower it to a B double flat, also making the interval diminished. Augmented intervals are wider. So in this example, if we take our E flat to B flat and we raise the higher pitch to B natural, we now have an augmented fifth. We could also augment that interval by lowering the bottom pitch to an E double flat. Group four intervals are what we call compound intervals, any interval wider than an octave. Because musical systems repeat at the octave, it is sometimes easier to figure these based on their simple counterparts. In order to do so, we begin by taking the size of the interval and subtract 7 from it. So for example, D up to F sharp is a tenth. We subtract 7 from 10 and we end up with 3. The simple counterpart to a tenth is a third. Thirds are group two intervals, meaning that they can be either major or minor. So we do our quality check using that rule. F sharp shows up in the major scale built on D. D to F sharp is a major third. Add the octave back to it by adding seven. D to F sharp is a major tenth. In this interval, F to C, if we count all the letter names between them, we'll find that this is a twelfth. Subtract seven from twelve, and you end up with five. A fifth is the simple counterpart to a twelfth. Fifths are group three intervals meaning that they can be perfect, augmented, or diminished. C shows up in both the major scale and the minor scale built on F. Therefore, this is a perfect fifth, and when we add the octave back in by adding seven, we end up with a perfect twelfth. So in summary, an interval is the distance between two pitches. Intervals have three characteristics direction, ascending, descending, or harmonic, size, the number of letter names separating the two pitches, and quality, the specific expression of distance between the two pitches. For quality, we have four different groups of intervals, each with its own rule for determining the quality. Group one consists of seconds, where we simply count the number of pitches in between the two pitches, Group two, which consists of major and minor intervals, where we see whether the top pitch is in the major or the natural minor scale built on the bottom pitch. Group three, which consists of the perfect intervals, where we see if the top pitch is in both the major and the natural minor scales built on the bottom pitch. And group four, which consists of the compound intervals, which we figure by figuring out the simple cousin and then using the appropriate designation. Well, that's it for intervals. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. Until next time.